solve x squared minus 4x equals negative 9 by completing the square. So again, we need to make sure that we have our variable terms on one side and our constant on the other side, and that's already done for us, right? We can see here we have just x squared minus 4x on the left and just negative 9, the constant, on the right. Um, you do want to double check that your quadratic term, the one that's squared, is positive, and x squared is a positive term. So we're good to go there. So we can just jump right into finding our perfect square constant, right? Because we want to be able to factor this variable expression into um, a perfect square binomial, or perfect square trinomial that we can factor into a binomial squared. So remember, the formula is c equals b over 2 squared. Our b value for this trinomial is negative 4. So negative 4 divided by 2 squared. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2, and negative 2 squared is a positive 4. All right, don't forget when you square a negative, a negative times a negative does make a positive. So then if we go back to our equation, we would have x squared minus 4x, and you would add 4 in order to make that a perfect square trinomial. And then whatever you do to the right side, you must, or to the left side, you must do to the right side. So we have to add 4 to negative 9, too. Okay, so now we're ready to factor. Um, we're ready to factor x squared minus 4x plus 4. So what factors of 4? So what two things multiply to 4 and add to negative 4 are b. And so the only things that multiply to 4 are 1 and 4 and 2 and 2. 2 and 2 sounds nice, right? 2 times 2 is 4, but we need a negative 4 when we add. So negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Negative 2 plus negative 2 is 4. So we would have x minus 2 squared because they were both negative 2. Again, those numbers here match what we had up top, the numbers that we squared. So you can always kind of use that as a checking point to make sure that you did factor correctly. And then if we simplify the right side, negative 9 plus 4 is negative 5. And now we have our perfect square variable expression equal to our constant and we're able to use the square root property, take the square root of both sides, um, the square and the square root cancels on the left, and so we have just x minus 2 equals, again, any time you take the square root of a square, you have a plus or minus, the square root of negative 5. So then x minus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of negative 5. Well, 5 is not a perfect square. 5 is a prime, so we actually can't even simplify that square root, but we have a negative inside the square root, which means we have an imaginary number. So we can pull that i out and leave it as i times the square root of 5. Now remember, if 5 wasn't a perfect square, but you could simplify it, you know, say it was 20, you would do your factor tree, or you would come up with your perfect square factors and, you know, work through all of that. But for right now, 5, we just leave as it is. Um, and then we're going to solve for x. And again, we could break that up into two separate equations, but when we add 2 to get our x alone, 2 cannot combine with i square root of 5, right? They're not like terms. One's imaginary and one is real. So we could just write them together as one answer. We put our real term first, the 2 that we added over, plus or minus the i square root of 5. And that is our final answer. Um, one thing I want to point out is that we can kind of check our answers by graphing, um, not necessarily this one, but um, in the future we will talk about, you know, graphing, you know, we did talk about how we could solve by graphing, and um, it works when you come up with answers that are real, not imaginary, you don't see imaginary numbers on your graph, but, you know, the previous problems that we worked on that, you know, you did get a real answer, you could always plug it into Desmos and you could find the x-intercepts, as long as you have it equal to zero, you can find those x-intercepts, and they would be rounded, like, you know, if you had a radical in it. So there's ways to just kind of easily, quickly check with Desmos. You can do it on your graphing calculator as well. So if you have any questions about doing it on the graphing calculator, let me know. Um, I just want to remind you of those different tools that you can use to help make sure that you did your work correctly.